Martin, in thinking about existence, everybody starts with talking about the laws of nature, laws of physics, and fine, I know what that is, but, you know, frankly, if I stop to think about it, I'm, I'm really not sure what we really mean by laws. You're not the first to be puzzled. One of Einstein's most hackneyed sayings is, the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it is comprehensible. <laughs> what he meant by that is that the uh, laws of nature, which are minds are attuned to understand, seem to apply not just here on Earth, but elsewhere in the universe. We could imagine a universe where there were no laws at all, completely anarchic, mm. where every atom was different, <laughs> uh, where the laws of nature were different in different places, etc. And were that the case, clearly we'd make no progress at all in making sense of the external world. So it's a contingency, so far as we understand, that the universe and our world does display all these regularities, and that's what makes science possible. We start off by classifying things, by um, biologists classifying species, um, chemists classifying different substances, and physicists classifying atoms and particles, and then we find that all these particles are the same everywhere, and they are governed by quite simple laws that we can write down and express mathematically. In fact, the first regularity was uh, Newton's discovery of the law of gravitation, mm. um, which governed the planets in their courses and makes the apple fall here on Earth. But, of course, the progress of science has been these successive unifications and understanding that uh, there are patterns in nature. And this, of course, makes science possible. It makes it possible to make some predictions and to understand things. And also, it means we don't need to remember so much. We needn't record the fall of every apple because we know how it happens. And so it is the lawfulness, as it were, of the natural world which makes science possible. And it is a mystery, I suppose, why this is the case. But if we ask what are scientific laws, then, of course, they're of different kinds. But the most uh, straightforward, in a sense, fundamental are those of physics, those which tell us the uh, properties of the uh, fundamental particles like protons and electrons and tell us about the forces that govern them. And these, of course, are studied in the lab. And we can also study them beyond the Earth because when we look at the light from a star, for instance, the light if we analyze it into a spectrum, shows evidence for the atoms that are in the surface of that star. And we can see that those atoms are the same as the ones we have on Earth. So we have good reasons for believing that throughout the galaxy and beyond, the force of gravity is the same and the atoms are the same. And it's a challenge, of course, to understand why that's so and to explore what these laws are. Because if you look at the spectrum of a star and the spectrum mm -hmm. in your laboratory, yes. you can see the same kinds of classification of light mm -hmm. which are indicative of the certain elements. Yes, th that's right. If you spread the light into a spectrum, you get a sort of barcode, yes. which has lines in it which are characteristic of the different atoms, which each, emit, each emits and absorbs light of a particular frequency. And thereby we can infer what the stars are made of and also infer the properties of the atoms in them. And those atoms are the same everywhere, and so the laws of nature are universal in the sense that they apply everywhere they look, at least to the precision that we can measure them. Is it fair to say at the most fundamental level in physics that there are two categories, <laughs> uh, as you've said in laws, some that govern the behavior of particles and some that are forces that are the uh, interaction between particles? The most fundamental laws we have in physics are those that govern the ways the particles interact and the forces between them. And uh, do you see laws being like hierarchical, if that's the most fundamental? Mm -hmm. Are there laws operating at different levels of uh, emergent of physical properties? I think there are, because uh, um, if we think of the sciences, one sometimes thinks of them in a sort of hierarchy with um, physics at the bottom, then chemistry, then cell biology, and then all the way up to social science, right. and then uh, economists up in the penthouse. <laughs> um, and uh, one thinks of this as a hierarchy, um, like the different levels in a building. Um, that analogy is false in a certain way, because in a building, insecure foundations imperil what goes above. Yes. Right? Whereas in the case of 
different uh, mm. uh, levels of hierarchy, then they're independent. I mean, uh, a biologist trying to explain animal behavior doesn't really analyze it in terms of physics, and he has different laws, and ditto the cell biologist, etc. So each level in science has its own autonomous concepts. So the sciences are independent. But of course, there is a sense in which everything can be uh, interpreted as a consequence of physics, although that's not the most uh, enlightening way to interpret it always. But philosophically, that's an important point. In principle, would one be able to analyze a higher level in your building in terms of the lower level, in principle? I think most people would believe in reductionism in a sense, but in a rather boring sense, <laughs> in that, in principle, they would believe that you can have a simulation, starting with Schrodinger's equation, the equation governing atoms, which would predict, insofar as quantum theory allows, what happens in any complex system. But that's not a useful kind of explanation, because there are plainly emergent properties uh, at the lowest level. Things like wetness or turbulence can't be understood at the atomic level, though they are consequences of things that we can understand at the atomic level. And going higher up in the hierarchy, the behavior of any living organism, which is far more complicated than a turbulent flow, is also something which can best be interpreted at its own level. But that is not incompatible with saying that in principle, it could be a simulation, or could be simulated by a sufficiently powerful computer starting at the atomic level. One of the most important things we can ask about law is, are they constant? Are they forever immutable? Mm -hmm. And as a, an astronomer, a cosmologist, there is no better person to ask because your world is looking back in time. Mm -hmm. So you are able to see what these laws were like billions of years ago. Mm -hmm. That's right, because in principle you could have laws which are the same everywhere on the Earth, but do have discernible differences in very remote places, remote in space or in time. And in fact, one can look in detail at the light from a very distant object, something like a quasar, and see if there's any evidence for any difference in the atoms there, which would be a consequence of some change in the laws. Um, people have done this, and uh, at the moment there's no very firm evidence for any change at all. Some people have claimed small changes just at the margin, but it does seem that if we look back to a time when the universe was maybe a tenth its present age, then any change in the properties of atoms is no more than one part in a million. It's probably zero, but the best limit we can place is one part in a million. We could also do a similar test in principle in the lab if you can make a very, very precise measurement um, and do an experiment one time and then a year later. And then if you can do a very precise experiment, you might be able to um, get some limit. And these experiments are being done. They're very important because there are some theories which suggest that the laws and the constants might change with cosmic time, but at the moment there's no firm evidence for any change. Which reinforces the regularity and the comprehensibility of the universe. That's right, it's one less free parameter, although in principle it could be that in the early universe the laws are rather different. Indeed, the most popular theories do suggest that the uh, relative strengths of the different fundamental forces do change very early on, in a way that the theory predicts. But uh, it does seem that over the span of time we can observe with our telescopes there is no change. And of course, without that, it would be far more complicated to make sense of what we see. <laughs>